transforming your life through hypnotherapy has never been easier. With the help of your host, Julie, from CoachingHypnosis.net, in these power-packed minisodes, you're sure to find yourself engaging in more positive behaviors around both your physical and mental health. Here's your host, Julie. G'day, it's Julie from CoachingHypnosis.net, and you deserve to know how to get from the dugout of your mind with hypnosis in baseball, because people have had enough of being friggin' fabulous at baseball and burnt out at the same time. And I'm not a therapist or psychotherapist, but this is my 10th year as a clinical hypnotherapist in strategic psychotherapy. I currently help my clients online. They change their life without changing out of their pyjamas. And I can only imagine someone like you loves everything baseball, baseball cards, baseball teams, gum, baseball foam fingers, and you deserve to live up to your full human potential. And I don't know if you're tired of striking out in front of thousands of screaming fans, or you constantly find yourself in the dugout wondering where your confidence went. Well, it's time to step up to the plate and take a swing at hypnosis. Yes, you heard it right, hypnosis in baseball. Who would have thought that the sport that gave us chewing gum, sunflower seeds and those classic peanuts and Cracker Jack snacks would now be revolutionised by the power of the mind. Gone are the days where players would just rely on physical abilities and strong arms to win the game. Now players are taking a trip to the hypnotist to improve their focus boost confidence and overcome performance anxiety. And let's not forget about the added bonus of better sleep. Who wouldn't want to hit a home run in their dreams? But let's be real, the idea of hypnosis in baseball might sound a little out there. Some people might think it's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But don't be quick to judge, it's actually backed by science and many top players are already using it to take their game to the next level. Just imagine walking up to the plate and feeling completely relaxed, focused on the pitcher and visualising that home run. Or imagine making a difficult catch in the outfield and feeling completely confident in your abilities. With hypnosis, these scenarios can become a reality. And it reminds me of when a friend of Dr. Joe Dispenza shared a story about a baseball coach who had played in the minor leagues. Every time the coach pitched against a certain team, the players would thrash his team and they would hit home runs, doubles, singles, third line drives, mammoth fly balls over the fence. His team didn't struggle that way, the way that they did with this particular team. Why were the results so different? Well, he decided to do something about it. The coach kept a log of what his opposing hitters did against him. The night before he started against his team, he sat down in his hotel room and crafted a plan of attack that he would use on all the hitters. He knew their weaknesses, their strengths and tendencies, and he sat there for hours memorising the sequence of the pitches he was going to throw. Then he closed his eyes and mentally pitched that game, slider on the inside corner and low. Fastball up and away, change up, down and away. Fastball on the hands resulting in a weak ground ball for the first baseman. He did that for all 27 outs. Then he mentally rehearsed it over and over again and again and some of the night and the following morning. He didn't produce the exact same results he had mentally rehearsed in the game, but he did pitch a four-hit shutout, the best results he had ever had against that team. He started to use that approach against every other team and he started to win more and more. He also found it easier to concentrate and after all, he had already been through this game in his head. Now all he had to do was reproduce the same results. By mentally rehearsing all of his future actions, he was essentially warming up the associated neural circuits before every game. And it reminds me of when Ronald Springston claimed he stole $8,314 from a bank in Farmington because the hypnotist he went to to help him lose weight also left him with an uncontrollable urge to rob a bank. The thing is the hypnotist never mentioned robbing a bank and an expert was called in to testify and that expert was the late Richard Garva who had to testify that hypnosis doesn't have the power to make a person do something against his own value system. Unfortunately, on the 2nd of November 2016, the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis lost a respected teacher, Dr. Rick Garver, 
who died peacefully in his Texas home. Dr. Garver's fascinating life exemplified a passion of learning and performing exceptional athletic talent. Rick also attended the Ohio State University on a baseball scholarship, where he excelled in two varsity sports. After graduation, Rick declined a professional baseball contract and instead qualified for and participated in the Professional Golf Association Tour. Rick then became an eager student of martial arts, learning black belts in judo, karate and aikido. Ever the sportsman, Rick later earned silver medals in the Senior Olympics in golf, table tennis and racquetball. After college, Rick began a more than two-decade military career as a United States Air Force officer, earning him Air Force wings and serving as a line officer in fighter interceptor weapons. He was severely injured in a helicopter crash in Southeast Asia during one of his several overseas deployments. For more than 40 harrowing days, Rick covertly transversed the local rice paddies and countryside and returned to his base using self-hypnosis to enhance his chances for survival. By enhancing his focus while managing his pain and anxiety, Rick quickly found his passion for psychology, assuming the position of Chief Psychological Services at San Antonio's Wilford Hall Medical Center and founding its hypnotherapy clinic. Rick earned diplomat status with the American American Board of Forensic Medicine, the National Institute of Sports, the American Academy of Pain Management, and the ASCH, Australian Society of Clinical Hypnosis. Rick was also a sought-after presenter. Dr. Garvin's forensic expertise provided valuable information to the FBI and other federal agencies for over more than two decades of service and 150 consultations. Rick's hypnotic interviews provided valuable information in many cases cases including the investigation in 1979 of the assassination of federal judge John Wood. His efforts were also instrumental in the development of the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit Forensic Hypnosis Program. His service was quiet, consistent and efficient in these disciplines of life. However, as you can imagine, Rick left behind a legacy, a series of sequences and strategies to help hypnotists help people lose weight, quit smoking, and enhance athletic performance. And you can read a few of his strategies in a book titled The Handbook of Hypnotic Suggestions and Metaphors by Corydon Hammond. Dr. Garver recommends that if an athletic client is visually rehearsing athletic moves, it's very important to make sure that the image they have is a correct one, whether it's developed by coaches or one that they've conceived from a book, videotape, or another credible source. It's important to be able to see yourself associated as a looking at yourself through a videotape replay. It's important to look out from yourself as you would when you're actually performing that particular motor skill of what you are doing to feeling every move as well as seeing it, including hearing what you're doing and then memorize the way that you do it best. Keep replaying what you do right versus what you do wrong. It is very important to memorize what is good. Then anchor the arousal every time you make the right move. Use your left hand to touch your right shoulder. If it's no good, do the opposite. What's important is this process reinforces everything that's right. It maximizes optimal reinforcement of positive performance. When you really get specific about the arousement level of the rehearsal and the performance, because practicing your moves thousands of times in your mind can help you increase your muscle strength by 22% without doing any physical moves in a study published in the 1992 Journal of Neuropsychology. Subjects were divided into three groups. The first group was asked to do finger exercises for five training sessions per week for four weeks. The second group rehearsed the same exercises in their mind, the same timetable, without activating any muscles in the finger. People in a control group either exercised or mentally imagined exercising their finger. At the end of the study, the scientists compared their findings and the first group that did the exercises. You've probably guessed. They got a 30% increase in finger strength. But what no one anticipated is a group who only mentally rehearsed the exercises demonstrated a 22% increase in muscle strength just by you thinking you're a baseball champion. Rehearsing your champion baseball moves in your mind, you literally transform yourself into a baseball champion. So why not give it a shot? After all, it's not like you have anything to lose except maybe a few bad habits, fears and phobias. And if all else fails, at least you have a great story to tell your grandkids about 
about the time you tried hypnosis in baseball. And most importantly, it can add a little bit of humour and fun to the sport we all know and love. So grab your bag of peanuts, relax and let the power of your minds do the rest. So here is a hypnosis imagery script for a baseball scenario from the website leagueathletics.com. Find a quiet space and comfortable position. Take a few moments to get adjusted to your position. Notice any discomforts and adjust to a comfortable space. Try not to cross your arms or legs, rather leave them in a comfortable position where they can lie loose and limp for the next few minutes. You will focus all of your attention on relaxing your body, quieting your mind, and becoming present with what you're doing right now. This is your time, so whatever has gone on the prior, the next few minutes to whatever will go on. During these next few minutes, while you relax, your body doesn't concern you. All that matters is the present moment, since this is the only time that you are in complete control. Control, take all thoughts, good, bad, and put them in a small box and park this small box on a shelf for the time being. By taking this step, you are now free to channel your energy into the present moment. This is a unique opportunity for you to nourish the mind and body. And now that you have placed all of your thoughts in the park mode, you are completely focused in the here and now. And you have made a clean break from conscious thought and prepared to be more in the present and in the right frame of mind. You know that entering the right frame of mind at the beginning of each practice or competition, you alert the mind that you are now focused and will not be disturbed. You are now in the training or competitive mindset with an undivided mind. Now I want you to focus on your breathing. Take a deep breath, feel the air, fill your lungs, then slowly exhale, feeling all the tension exiting your body. Repeat this three or four times, focusing on your breathing and becoming more and more relaxed with every breath that leaves your body. Now I want you to imagine arriving at the field for practice an hour before the game. Hear all the sounds of all your friends arriving excited for another day at the ballpark. Smell the freshly cut grass, the bubble gum like you always used to chew and any other smells that you enjoy. When you get to the park, see yourself lace your shoes up, go through the stretching and a typical warm-up routine and you can just tell that you feel really good today. Just put your batting gloves on and grab your favourite bat. Pick a helmet that fits you just right and you're ready to take some cuts. You're on the field during batting practice and it's a nice sunny afternoon and the day is simply perfect weather to play baseball. You are with your hitting group and rotating through each round of hitting and as you swing, you work on having a good feel of your swing and driving baseball. The first baseball flies off the bat as you complete each round of hitting. You hear the baseball hit the bat with a sweet ping and you feel confident with each swing. You see the ball clearly as it is being released by the pitcher and you swing in a sequence and very rhythmic. During the last round of hitting, you hit nothing but balls with backspin. You see each of them travel with maximum carry. Your swing is short and quick to the baseball. You're staying behind and on top of the ball and you swing perfectly through the hitting zone. And you see and feel the ball jumping off the bat with every additional swing. At the end of batting practice, you feel confident and in complete control of your swing. You love this part of the game and you are so ready for the game to begin. During the game, you watch the pitcher throws your teammates. You see how he is pitching to them in different situations. You see how he pitches when ahead of the count and how he pitches and when he's behind the count. You have a good idea of how he likes to work. You see his release point and you get your internal clock timed for the velocity of his pitches. Your confidence is high. You've done a good job of preparing the hit. You're now in the hole and go back to the bat rack and select your bat and get your helmet off the shelf. All your equipment's in place, you're ready to go and have a sense of calmness and business-like attitude as you prepare to go on deck. Once on deck, you get your timing with the pitcher and as you take practice swings, you feel balanced and in rhythm. You pay attention to the action that is taking place and anticipate any possible situations that may arise during your at-bat. As you fine-tune your focus, you take the bat over your head and stretch. You also bend over and limber up any part of your body that feels right and you continue to take practice swings 
at a controlled pace until it's your turn to hit. And once it's your turn to hit, you walk to the plate with a calm, confident, relaxed feeling. You look at the coach to get the signs. You program my approach for the first pitch. You look at your pitch in the zone of your choice. You step into the box and go through the regular routine of tapping the plate, taking your practice swings. You focus on the pitcher as he gets the sign from the catcher. You own this guy. Once he gets the sign and begins his routine, you settle in to my stance you tell yourself see the ball and trust your abilities and the outcome is of no concern to you because you are in the process of seeing the ball and reacting freely you are ready to go and feel calm and confident you feel balanced as a pitcher goes into the wind up you load and stride at the proper time and feel in sync with all pitchers rhythm you focus on the release point of the pitcher and immediately recognize what type of pitch he is throwing it is you pitch you let the pitch travel as you begin to unlock the swing your back knee triggers your swing begin to unlock in perfect sequence and in perfect timing you remain balanced as you effortlessly swing into perfect contact the ball jumps off and bad as you swing through the ball you hardly feel the ball because your contact was so solid as you finish your swing you begin to run towards first base you know you will go for extra bases so you get into your turn early your round first base and headed for second you feel fast and glide into second base you easily reach second as, as the ball is being thrown from the outfield as a game processes you trust your ability to see and feel each pitch as it leaves the pitches makes its way to your zone of choice and it makes contact with your bat because you're focused because you are in the process of reacting and trusting with freedom what you see or feel in your mind are not concerned with the outcome you feel calm committed and focused each and with every time you step into the batter's box each time you take a swing with consistent tempo you can see or feel the ball make contact with the bat and when this happens you rejoice with confidence and self-satisfaction you know the pitcher will have an impossible time today getting you out you own this pitcher this is a great day to be playing baseball this is my day Take a moment to see the rest of the game, see yourself having success, having fun with your teammates and enjoying every aspect of the game. Now the game is over, shake your hands with the other team congratulating them on a game well played and hear your coach talk about things that you and your teammates did well as well as things that you need to continue to work on. You can feel the confidence inside yourself and you are excited to keep working on the skills that will help you improve. You do one last cheer together as a team and you head home for the day. And as you lie in bed that evening, you think back on the game and you cannot help but thinking how much fun it was to be out there and you cannot wait to play baseball again tomorrow. And as you lie there, I want you to focus on your breathing. First on your inhale and then on the way that you exhale. Take a few more breaths and when you're ready, open your eyes and welcome back. You're perfect just as you are. So what if you thought about baseball hypnosis differently and what if you didn't? The choice is yours.